is up guys welcome back to another episode of Joe's Tech today we're gonna to be taking a look at something that is kind of one of my favorite categories and uh, you know this one's kind of a hit and miss for people and that's RGB if you guys didn't know NZXT recently just announced their new lineup of controllers and accessories and that's exactly what we're gonna be taking a look at today so the two primary kits are actually right behind me here so we have the um, Hue 2 RGB kit and this is a uh, pretty much kind of similar to the other previous um, Hue Plus kit where it has, you know, the LED strips and a controller, but there's so, so much more to this and there's a lot of cool accessories that we didn't have available before that are now compatible with this. So we'll kind of get in that in a second. The other one that's actually really cool and really new is, well, the other one that's new to the lineup is the Hue 2 Ambient RGB kit and that's also something we're gonna be taking a look at today. Um, and basically what this is, is it's a separate controller um, that has uh, similar LED strips, but it's based around uh, use on your monitor and throwing an ambient light behind your setup. And it's not so much just like throwing a light behind the computer, but there's a lot of other cool stuff involved in it too. So we're gonna definitely get into that, but why don't we go ahead and just like break down all the kits and all the options that you can get, and we'll kind of go through that right now, and then we can kind of talk about how it all hooks up and uh, you know what it looks like. As far as support on the new Hue 2 controller, you actually have four channels now. And this is really a big deal because on previous gen, you know, you only had the two channels on the Hue Plus controller. Each of those channels was either LED strips or fans. You couldn't mix and match. And, uh, you know, this newer generation that they've come up with, um, I guess there's actually a module on each LED device, which allows it to kind of get uh, recognized individually by the cam software once it's all connected and that's why you're able to uh, you know have different types of device devices in line for the test build I did today I used an NZXT H500 I also used the Hue 2 RGB kit which is just the LED strips and then I used the ambient kit on my display and I also added in the accessories for the cable combs and for the underglow kit so you guys will be able to see all that kind of stuff installed together. And I'll try to give you guys a quick breakdown of you know how the install went for each of those. The RGB cable combs cannot be disconnected. They're permanently attached, but include five eight pin connectors and two 24 pin connections. So installing the cable combs was pretty straightforward. It was just very tedious, you know, feeding all the cables into the combs. And obviously that's not really a, a design flaw in uh, the cable combs themselves, but it's just the process of putting everything in there in line. I used factory sleeved cables, so they're also a little bit thinner, um, but uh, the only 
thing that I found was kind of a flaw was because I'm using really thin white cables. Um, you know, there's a wire that connects the combs and that was kind of hard to hide. Now, if you actually had like real sleeved cables, it'd probably be really easy to kind of tuck it in and, you know, hide it from, from the view. But uh, that was probably the only downside that I saw to the way that that installed. Um, each of those cable combs is permanently connected. So if you have uh, one GPU instead of two GPUs, basically what you can do is just hide the second set of combs somewhere in the bottom of the case. In case you guys are interested in adding the Hue 2 uh, underglow kit, each of those strips is 200 by 20 by 8 millimeters and includes 10 RGB strips. The install is really simple. You basically just use the included adhesive strips and you stick them to the bottom of the case. Once you've done that, there's a little PCI blank that plugs into a free um, PCI slot and then you route the cable that's included uh, back to your Hue 2 controller. So that was super simple. For some reason that underglow kit does not come with magnetic strips. It would have been maybe nice if there was some type of like adhesive magnetic strip you could stick to the bottom and then just kind of magnetically stick it, you know, to the case. And the only reason why I bring that up is because, you know, I'm using an H500 um, and the way that uh, these underglow strips stick to the case, I had to remove the dust filter in order to get a good, um, you know, spot to adhere the strips onto. And at that point, then, you know, I'm kind of letting dust into the case. Now, Granted, I'm using a power supply right there and it's kind of exhausting it out the back. So it's not a huge deal, but um, maybe something that, you know, you could consider picking up is just like some of that uh, adhesive uh, magnetized stripping, I guess, and stick that on there instead. The only accessory that I don't have is the Air RGB2 fans, which they look pretty similar to the original Air RGB fans, but they um, seemingly from the pictures have like a brighter... RGB ring in them and uh, you know, I'm not hundred percent about that That's just what it looks like from the pictures on NZXT site Obviously the one main differentiator is gonna be that they you know You can put them in line with other Hue 2 accessories on the same channel um, Which is kind of a big deal if you're I guess limited on how you're gonna be connecting everything back to the controller And obviously if you're building a new system, why would you not go with you know, whatever the newest uh, version is, right? If you guys are interested in the technicals, there is eight RGBs built into each of those fans. They are four pin PWM connectors and they're rated with a speed of 500 to 1500 RPMs and a noise level of 22 to 33 dBA. If you guys really want to take a look at these fans, let me know in the comment section below and maybe when they come become available, I can try to pick up a set or see if NZXT would be willing to send out a set um, and you know we can do a full review on those as well. So finally speaking about the Hue 2 controller itself, as you guys can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the original design, a little bit slimmer, so it'll fit better into, you know, tight case environments. Um, the one thing I really liked about this design is that it's magnetic, so uh, it made the install really easy, especially when you're, you know, filling it with a bunch of wires and you maybe want to pop it off the case real quick, plug some more things in as you're doing your cable management. It just made things a lot easier. So I'm a big fan of that design. But if you guys did want to install it in a drive caddy, like a two and a half inch drive caddy, it does have the holes, um, you know, set up on the side so that you can do that. My favorite addition to this lineup is probably the Hue 2 ambient controller. It looks pretty similar visibly to the Hue 2 controller, but it has half the channels and the main function is to control ambient lighting on the back side of your display. And uh, the install is pretty straightforward. The strips, they basically mount to the outer edge of the rear side of your monitor. NZXT's included pretty careful instructions for various sizes of monitor, whether you have a 24, a 27, a 28, a 30, a 32. They have all these different layouts you could do for ultra wide or standard resolutions. Um, and basically you put those, you know, on the outer edge using the self adhesive strips on the back side of the LED strips. They've even included some cable management straps, which is pretty cool. Once you have those LED strips attached to the back side of your monitor, the only other thing you need to do is mount the Hue ambient controller itself. That controller requires two cables, which are the power cable, uh, which just uses a standard wall outlet. And they've included, like I showed earlier, those uh, several different connectors. If you don't live in the US, there's other options there as well. And the second cable is the USB type A connector, which allows your cam software to communicate with the ambient controller. Once everything's connected and you have your cam software installed, it's pretty straightforward. There's a short tutorial that basically uh, calibrates the LED strips in the orientation to which they're installed so that the software knows exactly where they're at um, and it can illuminate accordingly. 
Now the reason they call this the ambient light kit is because it provides an ambient light behind your display and the best part about this kit is in the cam software you can actually turn on ambient mode and what this does is it'll basically illuminate whatever's on your monitor onto the wall behind it. Now where this is really going to be fun is when you're playing a game, let's say you're playing some PUBG and you really want that immersive experience, it's going to pretty much backsplash everything that's on your monitor onto the wall behind you and it just makes you feel like you're really more in the game than if you didn't have that, that nice lighting effect. For those of you guys wondering, that ambient mode is only available on the ambient RGB kit. If you have both the Hue 2 and the ambient kit, it still will only illuminate off the ambient kit. The rest of your PC would be whatever, whatever other mode you've chosen. Uh, however, if you want to go the other way and you want the same effect to be across both controllers, you can do that, such as a static color or maybe like a rainbow effect or whatever it is. I've always been a big fan of these RGB kits and I'm going to take the risk of repeating myself as I have so many times before and saying that uh, I think that these RGB kits provide a way for you to not be married to a specific theme on your PC and they allow you to kind of change with the seasons or however you want to do it. You can change up your PC all the time and of course NZXT is always bringing it to the next level every time they come out with these kits and they're kind of setting the bar for other manufacturers out there. Aside from the few things I kind of mentioned throughout the video that I felt like could be improved, there wasn't really anything that was a deal breaker. I feel like this system was really well thought out, um, you know, and, and I like that NZXT's made it very kind of like simple for, you know, the average person to be able to put this system together and get a really customized look or, uh, you know, again, have like a more immersive experience while they're gaming. And that's what's really nice about this whole kit. If you guys want to check any of these kits out or any of the accessories, I'll go ahead and leave links to everything in the description below. NZXT's got a ton of options as you guys can kind of see from this video and then of course they have their kits on their own website so I'll go ahead and link that stuff below. Hopefully I've provided some clarity on how everything kind of works within this kit. I was a little worried it was going to be too much for one video but I also don't want to leave anything out for that one person that maybe stumbles upon this video. If for some reason I forgot anything, feel free to leave a comment below, a question feedback, whatever it is, I'm happy to hear it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up on the way out. And if you guys want to see more tech videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, guys, this has been Joe's Tech. I'll see you in the next video.